What's good everybody? If you're here, then that means you're probably wondering if it's a good idea to take out some cash from your home by using a home equity line of credit, otherwise known as a HELOC. So you're, if you're wondering that question, uh, I wanted to show you with the rates being currently right now on a 10 year, 5.75 interest rate on a HELOC, uh, with the 20 year, 7.82 interest rate on a HELOC and this is on the Forbes website. This is the rates that are currently averaging right now as of December 11, 2022. And you're trying to figure out, you know, with this being the case, is it a good idea to go ahead and take out cash from your house using that method? And uh, also, you know, even though those are the average rates, it is possible to get some lower rates as you can see here. And we're gonna talk about that stuff in just a moment. Some of the reasons why you might be wanting to actually uh, withdraw cash from your home in a form of a HELOC might be because maybe you're a real estate investor or you're trying to get into real estate investing and you wanna use the money to invest in home. Maybe you're a business owner and you're trying to use the money to invest in your business or maybe you know you're just trying to prepare for a storm or whatever might be going on economically you know in the coming future and you just want to have access to cash just to know that you have some emergency money there that you can call on or use in the case that you need it whatever the situation is that is having you to think about you know trying to withdraw some funds out from your home then you need to know this information that we're going to talk about today because we're going to talk about you know what is a HELOC you know what goes into it and if it's a good idea for you to try and take one out now, as well as some options that you can get that might be lower rates as well. And with HELOCs, they're usually gonna have a variable rate, but there are some fixed rate options out there too, but we'll explain that in just a minute. Now, I know some of you here might be new to the whole HELOC concept, and you're probably more familiar with a home refinance cash out or something like that is what it's called. So one important thing I wanted to do was go ahead and just let you know the difference between a HELOC and a actual, you know, equity loan that you might get against your home to pull cash out. And you might hear it referred to as a cash out, you know, refinance or something like that. So let me just explain the difference if you don't really know what the difference is. So basically a HELOC is like revolving credit. You can draw what you need against the line of credit and pay interest only on what you've used and then pay it back. So with this, if you have not actually, you know, used it, then you don't have to pay anything. But if you have used it, then of course you would only pay interest, not interest in principle, only interest on that amount that you took out. And HELOCs typically have terms that allow you to repeat that process over a 10 year period. So basically you have 10 years, uh, in some instances, 20 years. It depends on, you know, who you're getting it from and you know what the terms are based off your situation but usually it's going to be anywhere between 10 to 20 years for that HELOC and of course in contrast with a home equity loan that's a lump sum fixed amount that you borrow and pay it back in installments so that's basically a regular loan because of course you're just refinancing your actual home loan so you know your home will actually end up being a higher amount your loan i'm sorry will actually end up being a higher amount after you do that because you would have taken out the difference in equity between what you owe and what your home is worth and they're going to be establishing a new loan with that and then you'll be getting the difference between what you owed and what the home was worth and what you actually decided to take out uh, from that home equity line of credit and one of the most important factors going on right now with the fed consistently raising interest rates and whatnot uh, that's part of the the thing that you need to know in regards to making your decision so as you can see right here uh, in the Forbes keep in mind that the HELOC rates will be maybe lower than those on the home equity loans now the Fed is likely to raise interest rates several times over the next year or two meaning repaying a HELOC will likely be more expensive in the future so what that means is basically with HELOCs you have a variable rate on most loans again i'm gonna oh, i'm sorry lines of credit and again i'm gonna show you some options that do have a fixed option but most of them are going to be variable so basically every month when the fed decides to change interest rates if they increase those rates which they do plan to increase those rates then your actual payment on that will end up being increased because it's whatever the prime rate is plus you know everything else that the lending institution adds on top of the prime rate now they did also list on here some examples of payments so let's say you had a 10-year HELOC at that 5.75 percent 
then you took out 25,000, you know, let's say you had 50,000 in equity, you took out 25, your payment on that would be about 119, so about 120 is what you'll be paying monthly in interest on 25,000. If you got a 20 year HELOC at that 7.8%, you would be paying about $163. So that's what you'd be paying on $25,000 that you might have taken out from that HELOC. Now, I wanna point out a few important things that you do need to know about the HELOCs. And one thing is gonna be, of course, you already know about the draw period. I told you about that. That's usually gonna be the 10 to 20 years of a repayment period that you'll have on them. Uh, sometimes you might be able to find a five years. So just knowing what that is, of course, is gonna be important. As I already mentioned to you, the rate is gonna be very important because it's usually gonna be variable unless you get a fixed option. So that means that you would have to prepare for your payment to change uh, you know, on a monthly basis, depending on what the interest rates are at that current time. Uh, if you do something like a cash out, your interest rate would be fixed. But after you do uh, refinance, then you're kind of stuck paying the interest in principle on that uh, because it is what it because it is going to be a part of your new loan so you know you kind of stuck with it until you pay off the loan at that point and with the uh, HELOC you only pay if you actually take something out you can let it sit there and just have access to it and then you can pay it back um, you know quickly and then get it out the way especially if you're doing something like trying to flip a house with it or you know trying to invest in something for your business that you're gonna get a return and then you can put that money back but if you never use it you know you never have to actually pay that interest rate no matter what it is at the time but an important factor that I wanted to bring up here is that as far as income tax deductibility uh, in 2017 tax cuts and jobs act suspended the federal income tax deduction for interest paid on HELOCs and home equity lines of credit from 2018 until 2026 so it will still be some years that you you know will not be able to uh, you know deduct that on your taxes but you know within a 10 year you know term at the average you know you would have a time period where you actually would be able to take advantage of that but i just wanted to make you aware that if you were thinking about being able to take out an interest on it, that's not something that you can currently do, but it is something that you will be able to do later on down the line. Now, just so you know, the site that I'm using right now to get this information that I'm looking at currently is going to be Super Money. Um, I'll put a link to them in the description. They do a really good job of putting information out there on different types of financial products. As you can see, home equity lines of credit, home equity loans, uh, they have a bunch of different options here. But right now we're talking about the heat lock, so that's what we have on the screen. They'll compare different options, uh, and you can see here different loan amounts that you can take. You can see here uh, like this option with the fixed APR at 3.5%, which is a lot lower than what we saw over here on Forbes for the average, which the lowest average on the 10 year was 5.75. So again, these are ranges just to kind of tell you what rates are available. You would have to apply to see what you actually get and the maximum uh, loan to value that you can get as far as equity that you can pull out. You can see those information, you can see that information over here. So like I said, they do a really good job of comparing these different places and all you have to do to get information on you know what's gonna be the best for you, like you can use a slider here to check where your credit score is is it your primary home is it your secondary home to see you know what they actually um do and with home equity lines of credit you can see that me dropping the score to 568 that really lowered or i'm sorry eliminated the chances of being able to get something and the reason for that is because with helix you do have to have a pretty decent credit score and they'll in able to uh, in order to be able to qualify for something um, so if you still, you know, having issues with your credit, if you haven't improved your credit currently, or, you know, maybe you took some damage to your credit, uh, after getting your house, maybe you need to get your credit back to a better place. Then I have a bunch of videos on the channel to help you with that. And if you need personal help with your credit, make sure you go down below and click the link to do a consultation with me and I can help you see, you know, what direction you need to go as far as improving and see if there's anything we can do to help you with your credit. But if your credit is in a good place, then you should already be pretty much good to go. 
Um, there are some fees involved with the HELOC, but I'm just going to go over some of the requirements. Um, you have to be a U.S. citizen, of course. You have to be a permanent resident, a good credit score. This says 680, but I have seen some places that do 620 as well. So you don't have to have extremely perfect credit score. Some places will actually work with lower scores, so don't get discouraged by that 680 there. You have to have sufficient equity in your home. Uh, most places are going to let you borrow 80 to 90 percent, even though there are some out there that might let you do 100 uh, percent. Your debt to income ratio, they're going to look at that too. So typically you need to be less than 43% debt to income ratio. You can calculate that on your credit report, of course. All you have to do is just look at what payments show up on your credit report, like look at any car loans you have, personal loans, um, your mortgage, and look at any payments on credit cards that you have, add all those payments up, and then you're gonna take your monthly income, you're gonna divide those two together, get your debt to income ratio, but more than likely they're gonna calculate that for you anyway. But that's just if you wanna get an idea of what that is. But as long as it's less than 43%, then usually you're gonna be in a good situation with that. So those are the requirements um, with most HELOCs that you're gonna be looking at. But again, uh, using a site like Super Money is good because they compare the different options so you don't have to go apply at a whole bunch of different places. You can you know, check out your options at one place and then just see you know, what you get approved for. Because at the end of the day, after adjusting the sliders to where you think you are, you can also just go ahead and apply you know, through this site. So definitely keep that in mind while you're doing your search on doing a HELOC. So what, what is the, the final you know, conclusion on what you should do in regards to getting a HELOC in a time like now? I would say, even though the interest rates are going to be increasing over time, uh, because of the uncertainty that we do have going forward, looking at the economy, it wouldn't hurt to have access to money that you don't have to pay unless you know you actually have to take something out and use it. Um, you can have that money just sitting there, and whatever the case may be, if you have an investment that you can invest it in, whether it be uh, real estate, whether it be a business venture that you're gonna try to get a return on. Uh, of course, if you're planning on using it, you don't wanna just use it for a random expense, like going buy a car. You don't wanna use it for uh, just a vacation that you've been wanting to go on, of course. Uh, you don't wanna use it to rack up on a whole bunch of stuff during the holidays either. What you wanna use it for is something that's gonna bring you back money so that if you do use it, it will, you know, you have a way for it to come back to you. And other than that, you wanna just hold on to it just in case you need access to the cash and the capital. And then, you know, if you don't need it, you hadn't paid anything on it. If you do need it, then you'll just pay the rate unless you end up getting uh, one of these options that actually do have a, um, a fixed rate. Now, hopefully this information was informative for you. I'm Will Frazier. If you like information like this, make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video so YouTube can show it to more people. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you'll be notified of any new videos I drop just like this. Now, at the end of the day, you have to make your own decision on what's going to be the best for you and your situation and your family. So I do hope that this was enough to make for you to make the right decision. Um, but I will see you guys next time on the next video. Until then, watch this next video, which will give you some more helpful information.